I remember it was probably 2002, 2003. I had uh, seen this uh, little report on CNN, and I'm not sure what the point of this poll was. I think it was maybe just a history poll to see what was going on uh, in the minds of Americans. And I, I can't remember the exact number. I think it was about around 20% of Americans thought that King Arthur was real. And 8% had thought that Adolf Hitler was fictional. Now, that's, you may think, 8%, that's not too bad. But seriously, it should have been 0%. And um, although, you know, I can hardly blame stupid people because Adolf Hitler is quite the character in uh, a whole bunch of fictional films, maybe they just, you know, aren't paying attention and just uh, think, uh, I don't know, maybe he's like this guy who was in World War, I don't know, whatever. Uh, well, uh, Hitler makes another fictional appearance in uh, Inglorious Bastards, uh, Quentin Tarantino's uh, latest film. I am a huge Tarantino fan, if those of you who watched my videos in the past and seen that huge Pulp Fiction poster in the back know, I, uh, I just have been a big fan of his work since uh, day one. And uh, he had been, I've been keeping tabs with this, he'd been talking about doing this film for years. I think he started writing it like maybe the late 90s uh, or early 2000s, but he had stopped uh, to make Kill Bill with Uma Thurman, and then he got uh, sidetracked further with uh, Death Proof in the Grindhouse uh, movie. So now finally he got a chance to sit down and do Inglorious Bastards. Now it uh, stars Brad Pitt, the leader of a small platoon of men out to terrorize and frighten and just mutilate and just butcher as many Nazis as they can in, in German occupied France. And uh, also with him is Eli Roth, and um, the cast also includes, excuse me, I uh, don't know their names by heart, so i got to use IMDB here. Uh, let's see, uh, Malayne uh, Laurent, uh, as a Jewish girl who runs away uh, and escapes the Nazis and uh, rebuilds her life in the middle of uh, France. Uh, she plays uh, Susanna Dreyfus, and uh, she is now owning a movie theater. Uh, under the name, I think it's Manuel, or something like that. Uh, also, uh, Christoph Waltz as uh, Colonel uh, Hans Leda. He is like a scary Jew hunter uh, for the Nazis. He considers himself uh, quite the clever detective, uh, but he is evil as shit. Uh, uh, Let's see. Also, Diane Kruger plays uh, Bridget von Hammerschmark, who is a double agent who is also a uh, German star. And uh, anybody big I should talk about here? Uh, nah, that's kind of it. And what a nice little cast he, uh, he's put together for this. Now, uh, first off, uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, Brad Pitt, I enjoyed that guy a lot. He has a ball with this part, playing Aldo Ray. Uh, this uh, southerner with a mysterious scar on his uh, throat that he had apparently survived. Quite a nasty uh, attack. And uh, they just really dig into the German troops and have made uh, a name for themselves uh, over the course of a couple of years. Now what's interesting about this film is it's not an action fest all the way through and I think that's a mistake of the trailers and the ads and the marketing is they sort of accidentally fool people into thinking it's like uh, Maybe a Kill Bill with Nazis. Uh, not really. Actually, it's kind of a thriller about a uh, plot to kill Hitler and as many uh, high-powered uh, Nazis as they can. And there's actually two plots uh, going on, two plots running parallel, not really interacting with each other. Uh, uh, first off, like I mentioned, uh, let's see, uh, Miss Dreyfus, who is the ex escaped uh, Jewish girl, she realizes that uh, the high brass of the Nazis are coming to have a premiere of this propaganda film to get the troops going because they're losing the war. And uh, they, they have this film called Nation, uh, Nation, Nation Pride, I think it's called, uh, about one of their uh, soldiers who is actually playing himself in the movie. And uh, he has a big crush on her. Uh, so he, of course, sees her. She has the theater. He wants it there. So they move it there. Um, and 
so once she realizes what's going to happen, she decides to burn the place down once uh, they get it all set. She doesn't know that uh, Aldo Ray and his gang have learned about this and also plan to blow up the, uh, the theater, making this probably the worst uh, movie premiere since, you know, Highlander 2. And uh, I love Tarantino, and he is, this is Rodriguez Free T Tarantino. He's not really uh, working with him this time around. Uh, what I love about Tarantino is you really don't know what's going to happen. He really... I, I, I sit back and just wonder what the fuck is actually going to happen to these characters each time I watch one of his films. I don't know who can die, and it's, characters can die, but something that character does beforehand can be used at the end as the conclusion uh, to bring about the end of the story. I, you know, you just sit and watch and just enjoy. Now, uh, for those of you who don't enjoy subtitles, you know, stupid people, you may uh, not enjoy this film so much. There's quite a bit of uh, 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 French-speaking and uh, German speechifying in the film, as well as English. Uh, it's almost kind of a, a foreign film. I know Tarantino's talked about being a filmmaker for the world, and this film he really does try. And it's actually quite exciting to go to a mainstream movie in a mainstream uh, movie theater and have it feel like an art film, actually, with some really hardcore gore mixed in there. It's it's quite an experience. I loved it. If you're a Tarantino fan, please go. Don't wait till DVD or HBO or uh, Netflix or whatever the fuck people do now. Um, just enjoy it. Uh, I had a ball. Uh, I gave this film five Ram Chips. Uh, loved it a lot. And uh, that'll be it. Push the button, Lindsay.